Um, hello again, uh, after this morning. Uh, my, my staff has prepared sort of the, um, the conclusions of uh, the panels, and I'm, I'm now a bit in two minds. Should I, should I read them out to you? But uh, I will have to read them myself first. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm warming to the idea of cloning after a day like today. You know, it's, uh, it would be a good idea to be able to be in two different places at the same time. Um, if it's okay with you, um, in closing, I would rather give you some of the thoughts uh, I have collected hearing people tell me about today and also with other meetings uh, I have had. Um, what we need, if, if we agree that perhaps our biggest challenge is, is to get the governance of all of this right, because we seem to agree on the end goal we want to achieve. We also seem to agree globally on the measures in the different sectors that will be necessary to get us there. Then the what is no longer the real issue, it's the how that is the real issue. And if we agree that the how is the real issue, then I believe that the way we organize ourselves is going to be of eminent importance. And if, if you are part of that organization through the Climate Pact and other methods, I'm sure with all the other stakeholders, we can come up with the optimal answers. Perfect answers don't exist, but optimal answers perhaps we can achieve. In this context, I honestly believe that climate law has a crucial role to play. And I got it back several times, you don't want a Christmas tree. Well, no, nor do we. Um, and by the way, you know, if you want to be enlightened, a Christmas tree is not the best option, neither in terms of energy consumption nor in terms of uh, illumination. So we need to have something that's focused. Uh, lead lights enlightening us. But the core issue is this. Can the climate law contribute to giving us enough guidance, enough security to follow this path, and at the same time offer us enough flexibility to take different bifurcations or roads when external factors will show that perhaps we've made the wrong choice, so we should put more emphasis here. This development takes care of itself. This development needs more support. The crucial contribution the climate law can make is to offer long-term predictability and security, that parties who will have to decide whether we achieve this commit to something and are willing to say, I commit to this, and if I deviate, I'm willing to be corrected. I think this is one of the most important things, especially investors need. Because the investors I've met so far, whether it's in my office, potential investors, um, I've met so far, whether it's my, in my office from the financial sector, from venture capital sector, from institutional investor sector, in my office or in Davos or elsewhere, all of them say, give us good projects, give us an idea. It's not, not the fact that they don't have money, they just don't want to take more risk than is sellable to their constituents, which is logical. And I honestly believe that the climate law can give that extra bit of security that some investors need to make this jump into the future. And, and, and this jump into the future is a challenge to all of us. You know, if I talk to leaders of European industry, they know they need to go, they know, they know what to do, but they struggle with how to do it. They know the transition needs to happen. They know that the end goal will be positive for them, but the transition itself is a, is a challenge. And there I believe the climate law can be of help. And if we can then bring together all the stakeholders and also make it possible for European industry to get access to credits uh, that are affordable and that are sustainable, then I believe this transition will go ahead. And, and let me end on this, on this notion which I'm discovering actually on a, on a daily basis. Since we are in such a deep transformational process, it's part of human experience that some things will not work out the way we plan them. 
They will be more difficult, they will be slower, and sometimes they will not succeed. Other things will go much faster than anybody had anticipated. We see it, for instance, now in sustainable energy uh, generation, etc. But in combination with the Green Deal as a roadmap and extra security provided by things such as the climate law, this will put us on the right track to achieve climate neutrality by 2050 and to achieve a substantial reduction of emissions um, uh, by 2030, which I hope will be in line with what the expectations are of the European Parliament and, if properly assessed for impact, can also be supported by the European Commission. Thank you so much for being here today. I will not prolong your agony uh, any longer by uh, keep, uh, keeping on speaking. Um, I count on your contribution, I count on your solidarity, you can count on mine. Um, my team, uh, led by Diederik Samsom, is at your disposal if there are things you see that are not going well. Um, um, it's nice if you tell us that things are going well, but it's better you tell us that uh, things are, where things are not going well so that perhaps we can have an opportunity to fix it. This will continue to be a cooperative factor. We are not just refocusing our economy, shifting it away from carbon to uh, a carbon neutral. We are also reinventing governance. We are reinventing governance because it will, be, it will be inclusive governance if it is to succeed. And for that, we need all of you. Thank you very much.